This is a tutorial about how to use your flashes in a creative manner, what I call off-camera flash. It's brilliant because it means that you can light up a subject matter using flash away from the camera, uh, therefore we could be very creative in how we light our subject matter up. Now what's important to point out here right from the get-go, as much as that tractor behind us isn't the most exciting of subjects uh, in the world to photograph especially using off-camera flash the principles I'll teach you in this video are exactly the same how to set your camera up how to set your flash or flashes up and that's it a tutorial on what I call off-camera flash so the first thing we're going to do is to set up our composition forget about your camera and forget about how you're going to light it the first thing is to set up a composition now what I'm going to do is this is this is why I love using flash in a creative manner I'm going to shoot the subject aiming my camera directly into the sunlight this is awesome awesome Got to move fairly quick. Right there. So that's not the most exciting shot in the world, but I wish, I wish, I really wish the tractor was was facing me a bit more because I want to try and shoot the tractor forward on, but the sun is setting further to the right. So I might come across it a bit more, but. I want to shoot directly into that sunlight. So let's get my setup done. This is really, really important to set your camera up like this. First of all, I'm going to set my ISO to 100. Set your camera to manual to begin with. You have to set in manual. You don't have to set in manual, but how I set my camera and my flashes up, I always set my camera and flashes up in manual. So camera set to ISO 100. Shutter speed, it's really, really important this, but I will explain the reasons why. Set your camera shutter speed to 125th of a second. Now all I'm going to do is simply adjust my aperture according to whatever the sky is doing. So at the moment I want to try and get a rich, rich sky. Uh, there, I've got a nice, nice dark sky. Remember ordinarily, if I was shooting directly into the sunlight now, I'm going to get a massive burnout and I don't want that, hence the reason I'm using my flashes in a creative way to counteract that. Okay, so I've got my shot there. So at the moment, I'm going to, of course I'm going to have a little bit of a hot spot where the sun is. Let's take a quick test shot at that and that's looking perfect. I'm going to increase that further. Okay. Right, so that's my initial shot. My initial shot shooting directly into the sun. I'm gonna have to move very quickly because the sun's coming down. Is ISO 100, my aperture is now set at F16 and my shutter speed is 125th of a second. It's so, so important to remember your shutter speed should be at 125th of a second and I will explain the reasons why. I've pre-focused on the tractor and now I'm simply gonna take a shot. I now have a silhouette of the tractor not very exciting so now what we're going to do is add the flash add the light onto the tractor to really make that tractor pop in the frame so what I'm gonna do now then is I'm gonna set this up using my pro unit it's a Godox AD 600 BM it's, a, it's what I call a pro uh, portable uh, flash head unit I'm gonna set everything up and take the picture with this then I'm going to replicate it using really cheap 35 pound young neuros just to show you just how cool well flash is irrespective of how much you pay for your equipment it's fair to point out, if I was doing this in the studio, or if I was doing this for a professional job, then I would now be setting my lights up with my light meter. But I know the chances are most of you guys wouldn't own a light meter, so I'm just going to uh, use my skill set and, 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 and judge it, and then take a few test shots, and we should be able to nail it, probably in a couple of test shots. But the most important thing is, like I said, is that your, flat, uh, your shutter speed is on 125th of a second. And at the moment I'm at F16. So I know, because I know my equipment really well, this is probably going to be around about half power. Maybe even slightly higher. Depends on how far back I have to pull the unit. In other words, how much of a spread I'm going to need. half power everything's ready and raring to go just need to put this on my camera take a test shot and we'll see what that looks like 
It's amazing how you have to work so quick when you're fighting against the sun, but uh, let's crack on. Right, so I'm all set up. Decided to shoot at full power, but most important thing here, I keep saying the most important thing, camera on a sturdy tripod so i'm not going to i'm not going to move this if i can get away with just one flash head unit then i will do so what i'll do from here is i'll just take a shot then i will just simply take another two or three shots by moving the flash head keeping it at the same distance away from the tractor but moving it uh, from the left hand side to the middle to the right and maybe go further to the right or even round the back there you go that's really 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 cool and that is simply off the back of the camera. Now, I want a bit more power, so I'm gonna risk opening the aperture just a little bit more. Notice I haven't done anything with the shutter speed. The shutter speed's left at 125th of a second. I will explain the reasons why in a second. And last shot. So let me just summarize and then explain to you about the shutter speed. Composition is key. Got my composition right, but remember I'm shooting directly into the sun. I've set my camera up in manual mode and ISO is at 100. Obviously it's uh, a very bright day, so my ISO is at 100. My shutter speed is 125th of a second, which is very, very important. And I'm gonna explain the reasons why that is now. Then with my aperture adjusting up and down, depending on how much light there is available to us in the sky. At the moment, I'm opting for F16, uh, around about f14 as well but that aperture will start to open and the iso will start to increase ever so slightly as that light dips down under the horizon but look let me explain the reasons why i set my camera up with a shutter speed of 125th of a second because this is super important most people when they set their flashes up on their camera they'll they always well they tend to set their camera up at their camera's flash sync speed uh, this camera i think is 200 or 250th of a second but i don't want to do that i want to set my camera up at 125th of a second and this is the reason why i'm going to take a shot now remember at the moment it's f 16 ISO 100 125th of a second now look because I'm at 125th of a second what I can actually do is now adjust my shutter speed which will adjust the ambient light only flash doesn't work relative to shutter speed so what it means now is because I'm at 125th of a second I can easily go up to let's say 250th of a second which is the camera's flash sync speed there or thereabouts now if I take a picture the flash power and the light given by the flash or offered by the flash onto the tractor remains exactly the same but adjusting my shutter speed increasing my shutter speed will now bring down the ambient light and make the image more grungy likewise i could slow the shutter speed down now to let's say an 80th of a second let's take that picture and now the flash light remains the same but the ambient light gets brighter and i can slow that down even more if i want to let's go down to 40th of a second which is another stop from 80th of a second and grab that shot perfect now i've done that using my pro light now let's do the same thing let's re replicate it using the cheap young uo 35 pound flashlights same distance away two flashes both on full power because remember we are shooting into the sun and camera um as i'm 
<laughs> I'm rushing like a mad fool because the sun literally is right down onto the horizon now or fairly close to it. So I'm just going to open my aperture a little bit more. Still at ISO 100 and my shutter speed still remains at 125th of a second. Right, let's just take a quick test shot. Make sure they're lighting up. Absolutely knackered. So, <laughs> it's so the wrong time for the battery to go on my vlogging camera, but seriously, I just finished up here and I saw what looked to be a nice family walking down onto the beach. So I run up while the sun was just slightly above the horizon and I said, excuse me, I'm a mad fool, but can I take a picture of you please? To which they said yes. Rushed up there, got set up, literally took me a minute, battery died on the camera, but I grabbed some fantastic pictures. And then I walked back, and as soon as I walked back down here to grab one or two more shots of the tractor, tractor driver turned up, and voila, even he jumped on the tractor, and he was just so happy to stay there and have his picture taken. So there, there you go, what a night. It was a massive, massive rush. Um, but it's so easy, it's so, so easy. There you go. Um, I can't say any more than that. Take a look at these pictures and thank you very much indeed for watching. If you're new to this channel, then this is what I do pretty much every week. So please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell and give it a thumbs up and all the rest of it. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Look how long my hair is. It's crazy, isn't it? I can't wait to get my hair cut. It's, it's the longest now it's been since the 1970s. So before I chuck these images in Photoshop, so you guys can have a look and see how I post process my pictures. Um, that that was a full on 100 mile an hour vlog. I really enjoyed it, especially using flash off camera, flash in a creative manner. It's right up my street. It wasn't meant to be a tutorial to begin with, but I just thought I would turn it into a tutorial. But of course it was manic with lots of things going on and we were up against the time as well. If you didn't quite manage to follow along, then let me know in the comments below and what I'll do is I'll create a tutorial on how to use your flashes away from your camera. In other words, how to use your flashes creatively. Just let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll make it really slow. I might even make it in the studio. Okay, so let's throw these images into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how I post process them. I've chosen these five images here. One, two, three, four, five. And the reason why I've chosen these images, uh, I, I took more shots. I did the family as well, a, a lovely family. But um, I want to choose these images because these were the images that will take a little bit more work to post process. Really easy, but a little bit more, more work to post process. In other words, these are the images where the camera was still, the composition never changed, and all that happened is I changed or I moved the flash around the subject. So let's have a quick look. First of all, I'm going to select all of these images. They should all be identical in terms of composition. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, as always, with all of them selected, come down to optics and click on these two here. This is a prerequisite, really, whether you're using Lightroom or whether you're using ACR that I'm using here. Now, we pretty much always click on these buttons and for good reason. So remove uh, chromatic aberration and also use the profile correction. The next thing I'm going to do is to crop the images. Press C on the keyboard, which is the shortcut for the crop tool, and choose the aspect ratio in this instance, which is which is pretty much normal for me on most of my landscape photography. I'm using the 16 by nine ratio. Now I'm going to just adjust the horizon ever so slightly. The horizon was level in camera, everything was perfect, but the mud flaps slope down from right to left and they look a little bit odd so let's just do that rules of thirds there or thereabouts i want lots of that delicious sky in there 
that looks good to me now because they're all selected when I make this crop the same crop will be applied to all of the images because it's important that when we go through these images the composition remains exactly the same okay so let's select the first image the very very first image and I'm I'm using this one as a base image and I want to just select or utilize the area underneath the tractor and I want to add a little bit of light in there and bring a bit more detail in there what I don't want is for the lighting to look like this where it's obviously being lit by a light source over here and the light source over here so let's grab on the first image let's open up our normal tool set I know I've already mentioned it but I'm using ACR which is Adobe Camera Raw it's the pre Photoshop screen I don't use Lightroom but of course ACR and Lightroom are the same program but just laid out in a slightly different way when I say slightly I do mean slightly now because since the update of Photoshop last week Lightroom and ACR are starting to look very very similar indeed okay let's go to my basic settings now I just want to lift a little bit of light there not too much only a little bit I want to lift some of the shadows so it's this information here that I'm trying to reveal and I think we'll do that by using a graduated filter use a graduated filter upwards like that so basically whatever I adjust over here will be applied from the green underneath and a bit of variation in between again let's move that exposure and let's move the shadows up ever so slightly that's all I want is a little bit of detail there okay right fine happy with that so now let's move on to the next image but this time I'm going to select one two three all four images because all these four images will be one image and so therefore whatever adjustments I make now I want to apply across all four of them so let's come back up to my normal tool set I don't have to do too much I mean these images look fantastic right off the bat as it is so let's have a quick look let's make them maybe slightly brighter bring my highlights down so I want to make sure I maintain as much detail in the sky there that I possibly can lift the shadows not too much and I'm going to leave it at that move the blacks down a bit because I do want it to be quite contrasty that'll do for me I don't need to do any more than that possibly move the vibrance up ever so slightly just want to be careful that I don't make the background too false in terms of a color once I've done that let's just confirm that press alt and s I'm not sure what it is on the Mac but it's alt and s on a PC click on modified and just to make sure that whatever I've created is applied to all four images so let's select on the first one press Control and a I don't need to do any more at this stage except to open the images up so Control and a select them all and press on open and all five images will open up in Photoshop one two three four and five what I now need to do is I now need to create all five images in layers as part of one project file and to do that well that's really easy let's click on the first image that I introduced into Photoshop and this is remember this is the base image I think we'll start off with that one so let's click on the second image there's lots of different ways to achieve the same result but I'm going to press Control and A to select all of the image Control and C to copy the image now click on my base image and press Control and V to paste in that image now that image now has been pasted in on a separate layer so we're just going to repeat the same process control and a to select all control and c to copy it come down to my original and press control and v and it'll automatically paste in as a separate layer and let's just do the same for the remaining layers there we go so now we have a project file with all five images taken all laid out in layers and just so you don't get confused and so I don't get confused let's now get rid of the other four images just leaving one project file open this part's really really easy let's start off from the ground up and then I'll explain what I'm going to do so to do that we need to switch these layers off click on the eye 
icon there. And now all four images above have now been switched off. So what I now need to do is simply introduce parts of each layer that I want to add to the base image. And how we do that is simply this. Select the first layer, so working from the ground up, remember the ground or the base layer, the background layer is, let's say, the floor. Now we're gonna work our way up. Hit that icon there and we can see what that's lighting up. Dead, dead simple. So what we're going to do is click on that layer give it a layer mask and press Control and I, Command and I on the Mac to invert that layer mask. Once it's black, it means now it's fully transparent. So therefore we're looking right through the top layer. And what we're going to do is press B for my brush tool. Make sure I select a nice big brush, a nice big soft brush. Make sure white is selected and make sure my opacity is at 100%. And all I'm now going to do is to paint in parts of the top image that I want to use in my overall file. So don't worry about the top. Let's make a slight adjustment there. Okay, there. So don't worry about the top. Everything there should be fine. I'm rushing this, but let's paint this in here. Drop that down here. Try and make that look as natural as you can. Take your time across here as well with the tires. Okay. There. Now you can take your time, you can mask this, you can do what you want, but that to me looks perfectly fine. Now I'm going to take my time around here, take my time around here, and I don't really know what to do with the trailer. The question is, do we want the trailer in the shot or not? If I don't want the trailer in the shot, then I'll remove the trailer. But for the purpose of this exercise, let's just leave that trailer there. Now You've got to be careful because obviously what I don't want to do is to highlight the floor there. But just so it's not so obvious what we've done, let's choose B for the brush. Let's just paint that back in again. So what I'm going to do is, again, with my white brush selected, this time I'm going to come up here and select 20%, or you could press number two on the keyboard just to give it a shortcut at 20%. It's a big soft brush and let's just have a little paint just there. So that'll just blend that in gently so it's not such an obvious dark and light. And we're just going to now repeat the same process. Click on that one there and let's see what this is added. Now this is interesting because this is now lit from further left, further to the left of the tractor, which is why we've now got shadowy areas in the wheels. You see, that looks quite flat. That looks nice and shadowy. I quite like that. There's no right and wrong way, by the way. You do this how you want to do it. I quite like the shadowing within the wheel. So once again, let's click on our layer mask. Let's invert it, Control and I, or Command and I on the Mac. Big soft brush. And now I'm going to paint in with a white brush at 100%, press zero, and let's paint that in there. I like the shadowing. This top layer here, or the layer we're working on, is very shadowy in here, which is the same as the shadowing here, except I obviously painted them out. Um, but it's up to you. You can choose any part of the image, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm only going to go with the wheels there, that's all. The next, well, that's been lit from the front. A layer mask, invert the layer mask, which means it's completely transparent. And now you see the shadowing in the wheel here from the left, the shadowing on the wheel here from the left also. But with this layer activated, it's the opposite. But what you can do if you wanted to, is do that and have the light source coming from both angles. Now it looks like the f it's being lit from the right and from the left with two different light sources. Again, there's no right and wrong way of doing this. This is entirely up to you. Let's have a look and see what this looks like because this is actually lit from the front. And I'm only using a black and white brush. Brush on white to reveal and black to conceal. There you go. Yeah. Now you can take your time with this and get this absolutely 100% if you want to. It's entirely up to you, but I'm rushing it. 
for the purpose of this exercise but there you go that's quite nice so we've got a nice bit of lighting from the front nice bit of lighting from the back that looks fine that looks good i quite like that that's nice so that's very different lighting in terms of the way that well just the way that the tractor has been lit i like that it's really nice top layer well that's the lighting around the back so that really gave us just that accent light up by the steering wheel and round where the driver will sit again perfectly fine so what i'm going to do create a layer mask by clicking that icon there control and i command and i on the mac make it completely transparent now i can zoom in if i want to and now i can paint up here make sure my brush is white okay it's a little bit dark there just a tiny bit dark so let's make our brush really really small and let's just go right in there tight as we like there you go it was just an accent light that's all i wanted was that little accent light and that is really really nice really nice and the same for up here if you want to um how did that light that up let's have a look let's just highlight that i like that that's quite nice let's do that again make sure white is enabled i'm going to go for a harder brush this time i'm going to rush it but i'm going to click on there hold down my shift button and that'll paint a straight line when i click between one and the other like so okay and if i want to this side from the light at the back was actually dark and i quite like how that light works quite nice you see so you can manipulate this as much as you want it's your core there isn't a right way and a wrong way to do it and if I just leave that like that that's pretty cool like I say I can go in and really really take my time and tidy all of this up um, that's dark there but I'm going to leave that bit of light there that's fine happy with that once I've done that all I now need to do is to clean this image up but I can clean it on these individual layers so what I'm going to do is use the shortcut Control alt shift and E and that will create a separate layer at 100% on the fresh layer I'm now going to come in and just clean this image up and if at this point I decided that I didn't like the tractor or trailer there then I could remove it there's obviously a leg there so let's just use spot alien brush click on that hold down shift click on that or take a line draw a line up and that's perfectly fine and then there's a cow there for instance i can get rid of that bit of a spot there so i can get rid of that um that actually is a cloud that's a cloud there but let's just draw around it shift and backspace and that will bring up my content aware fill or highlight it and then edit and fill so lots of different ways of achieving the same result but there that's cleared that up one other slight adjustment i'm going to duplicate this layer but i'm going to do that once again with the same shortcut Control alt shift and e but now i'm going to press Control shift and a to take this top layer back into acr i like working like this because i can do it back and forth really quickly again there's lots of different ways to achieve the same results that i'm about to show you now but adjustment brush uh, add a bit of light bit of shadow now i'm sure you guys know how an adjustment brush works but basically wherever i paint for instance here all my adjustments will only be made where i've actually painted so let's just clear that get rid of that so now what i'm going to do with this big brush here i'm just going to pop a little bit more light just to make the tractor pop a bit more it's entirely up to you but also what i'm going to do from here 
natural fat. Let's click on OK. Let's do it on a separate layer before and after just to make it pop a little bit more. But now I'm going to create a new layer. One last layer. Control Alt Shift and E. I actually click that twice. Control Alt Shift and E. Control Shift and A to take it back into ACR. But this time I'm going to add lots of clarity. I'm looking at the tractor. It's grungy. So let's bring that texture slider up. Let's really, really bring that clarity slider up, but really go overboard with it. Don't worry about how the rest of the image looks and don't look how the mud looks. Just look how the tractor looks. Again, gotta be careful not to go overboard with this, but for the purpose of this exercise, I will. I'm gonna click on OK. So now what's actually happened is the whole image has become more, there's more clarity in this top layer, but I'm gonna create a new layer I'm going to invert it to make it fully transparent. Press B for my brush tool. I'm sure you guys are ahead of me already. Make sure I've got white selected and make sure my opacity is at 100%. But now what I'm going to do is just paint in that grunge on that rusting tractor. There you go. And that's the before and after. And that looks quite nice. Now remember, because it's on a separate layer, I can reduce the opacity down or I could even get rid of it all together um, and I can add it to any part of the image or remove it from any part of the image because I'm using my layer masks. If I was to convert it to black and white, let's very quickly do that. This is how I would convert this image to black and white. Control, Alt, Shift and E, which, which means I'm creating a new flattened layer again. Control, Shift and A to open up or reintroduce my image back up into ACR. But you could do this with Lightroom as well. Come up here, click on my black and white button, and then make any adjustments that I need to make. There you go, like so. Let's pop that up there, nice and bright and vivid, nice and contrasty. And if you wanted to, you can click on the graduated filter, reduce the light down, reduce the light down, and create your own vignettes by doing that. Again, it's all subjective, it's entirely up to you, but this is how I work. Draw from it what you want to draw from it, but this is how I work. And click on OK. So now I could save that as the black and white version, or now I could save that as the color version. Simples. My work here is done. Thank you very much indeed for watching the video this far. If you have enjoyed the content, if you're new here, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. But more importantly, give it a thumbs up as well. I've got a fairly decent back catalog. If you are new, you might want to wander through. But um, before I show you the pictures coming up, once again, if you do want me to create a tutorial in real slow time so you guys can see exactly how I set up my flashes off camera i know i've already said it but just leave a comment below and that is it thanks for your support guys and i'll see you on the next one and hopefully you'll enjoy these pictures